and a very warm welcome to what we hope is a very special edition of The Good, The Bad and The Rugby. This episode forms part of the Vodafone Breaking Through series that we are running at the moment, which dives deep into the journeys, the challenges and the experiences that our guests have been through. We are pulling this together and we are envisaging a message to our audience that tackles the question, how can we all be a little bit better in 2021? And we hope to be able to shed light on a world of rugby that is totally inclusive and accepting as it goes and always looking to improve as well. Our next guest has had quite the journey from X Factor to a record deal, Vogue interviews to touching down in the corner. It's the one and the only Levi Davis. How are you? Thank you for joining us. I'm very well, Alex. How are you? How are you? We are very well. We are, we're on a journey with this, actually. I will be honest with you. And it's been, we spoke to Craig Maxwell Keys. Um, do you know, it's really, there's something very enlightening about trying to be better. Um, and I yeah. think we said to Craig the other day that there's, there's a lot of transmit in the world at the moment and there's not a lot of listening. And actually, it's very good occasionally just to, pause and listen and 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 try and be a little bit better off the back of it so that's what we're trying to do with this yeah um we are really pleased to have you on i'm very grateful that you've accepted and I'm, you curious, I'm curious to start by saying why why do you want to come on um i just thought it was, you know again it's a great opportunity to um speak, one speak about my story um but but two again help other people that potentially may have been may be in my shoes or 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 you know are thinking about it not sure what to do about it or you know um are close to doing it and and don't know the best way to go about it and maybe even learn from some of the things my mistakes and don't drop it on a text even though it was it was brilliant how it went but uh yeah there might be a better way to go about it so yeah um yeah that's it that's it really i love it so 2021, just sort of chaos and, and, and crashes everywhere. What, where I want to start actually is with you in the here and now. We'll, we'll go back to the journey and, and, and everything you've been doing. But where are you right now? Are you a musician who played a bit of rugby? Are you a rugby player who dabbles in a bit of music? You know, I thought you were like, where am I right now? Hey, where are you? Where are you right now? Uh, no, um, uh, no um, I'm a, I'd say... You know what? That's a, it's an ever evolving qu answer to that question. Um, you know, I, I'd still say, you know, I've got, I love sport. I do love sport. You know, I played a bit of sevens the other day and absolutely loved it. Um, uh, but I, my heart is in the music. Like, I absolutely love it. And that's where the way I see myself moving forward and continuing to move forward is with that, with music. Um, so I'd say I'm a music, I'm a musician. I'm an artist that, you know, still plays a bit and, um, yeah, there's a few th other things that I'm, I'm looking into doing as well, um, just to give myself some structure to keep moving forward. And, and, and because I don't know about you, James, but, um, you know, when you leave rugby, that structure that you've had, it's very hard to try and replicate that elsewhere. It's almost impossible. Um, and then you're almost adulting again. You're, you're learning, you're growing, you you. You, you have to set your own structure. You're not got, uh, you know, Sophie Bennett on the phone from Bath going, now, where are you, mate? <laughs> like, you know, it's a, your, your team manager, just like, uh, yeah, no. Um, so it's, it's a bit different, but no, I'm enjoying the challenge. No one tells you where to be and what to wear and which way to face and, and what to eat. And how, yeah, you've got, you've, got to, you've got to basically begin again, right? I mean, does that ring true for you? Has we've spoken about this many times, but it's a hell of a journey now. Of course, I think you know adulting. I've no, I've not heard that word great, before, but it's a great word. Essentially, yeah. I mean, my wife would argue that I am still not in any way, shape, or form an adult. Um, it's very hard because we have been kind of uh, indoctrinated, um, and actually, it, I think that's why it's so interesting with your kind of story is because you, you've done the rugby, you're going into musician, you've obviously had the stuff about your kind of sexuality. There's so much different avenues pulling you in different ways to, uh, to go with different things to address. Um, and for me, that, that transition was very hard outside of, of rugby because I, I missed the routine. I missed a sole purpose. You know, I missed the fact I'd given up a, a large portion of my life to, to, to do something. And at 36, I had achieved all that was possible to achieve with the limitations of my body and my skill set and, and time and luck and everything else. And now I have to start again. Um, and hopefully you're going to have more life to live doing something else than you have doing what you've done. Yeah. And that can be very, that can be quite daunting. And actually, the one piece of advice I would give to you anyway, but I think you've, you've cottoned on to it, is routine is essential. 
Um, and obviously going into the middle of a pandemic uh, and, and retiring just after that, you need a reason to wake up in the morning. You need a reason to keep training. You need a reason to stay healthy. You need all these kind of touchstones throughout your your, your day. Um, and it's important to surround yourself with good people. It's important to get a good routine. It's important to have a purpose. And, and if music is is your life, it's how does that fit around your, your day? How do you make that happen? Because so many people say, I want to do this. But then the minutiae of life gets in the way. And it's actually how to really make the most of it, you know? Well, I know routine is important, but I'm still trying to find one. So that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, exactly that. And that's it. And the circle bit as well. Like you, you're in a team full of like-minded individuals. You step out of that. And, uh, you know, they're still my friends. Like I could still contact them and speak to them, but I'm not seeing them every day. And then, you know, out of sight, not out of mind, but, you know, I'm not speaking to them all the time. And then that's another adjustment where who, you know, who, who in that team are, are your makes that you can carry forward as well so it's, it's it was yeah it's tough isn't it i think as well what you'll find is uh is that sports people are inherently selfish and it and it and it, and it, it suits us in one way but with that tunnel vision and focus it means that yes you have great bonds with your teammates and friends and and we want to hear about kind of the, the acceptance that your teammates had for for you and rightly so but if, 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 if you're not in a sportsman, especially rugby player sphere of influence on a day-to-day -day basis, you're forgotten because you're on to the next thing. And it's only when you retire do you then have to actively go, right, I need to check in with them, I need to check in with them. Whereas before, we always operated the policy that if we're mates, we're always mates. Like, I don't need to speak to you for six weeks, but I know when you pick up the phone. But unfortunately, when you're friends with sports people, I mean, I, have, I hardly see people from, from Saints or from Wasps. And I know if I speak to them, I see them, it'll be great. But I don't touch, I don't, I don't, you know, speak to them and meet up with them as much as I should do because we're all on this, this, yeah. you know, this sort of treadmill. Yeah, agreed. Agreed, for sure. For sure. That's it. That's it. I've definitely found that as well. Um, you know, the, I went back to Bath uh, once, I think, since I since, uh, left. I was like, oh, I messaged my friends. I met up with a couple of the boys. Um, but there, everyone's like, you forget that everyone's dotted around everywhere. Everyone's doing different things. And I was like, oh, brilliant. I'm going to go see this person, this person, organise it. And then I forget that no one actually sticks to their schedule. <laughs> they're not in Bath. If they're not in Bath, they're spontaneous, aren't they? So, yeah, no, but it's, it's something, there's something brilliant about that as well. Um, but, yeah. I think someone wise once said, I think it was actually Ferris Bueller, that life moves pretty fast and every so often you've got to stop and, and look around. But... I mean, it's interesting listening to the two of you chat. I mean, Hask, you know, you are multi-layered, but on the surface, you are big rugby player, successful, noisy, route one. That, that yeah. is how people would perceive you. And actually, one of the fun things about our podcast over the years is that we've broken that down and gone to some slightly more, you know, interesting places with you. Levi, when, when you look at your story, I mean, I, I can't think of anyone we've interviewed who's got as many chapters in, in as few a number of years as you do. Um and that is, we'll come on to some of those, but do you, I mean, do you recognize that? Is that, is that something that you're like, holy Moses, there is a lot coming and going in my life right now? Or is it, are you just living your life and cracking into it? It's a good song, that, holy Moses. Um, I, 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 when people remind me of it, I do look back and go, that, you could have told me this when I was seven, nine, seven, eight, nine years old. I'd have told you, no, like, no way. Um, but Where were you at seven, eight, nine years old? I mean, in terms of, not, you, not physically, but but, but who, who were you at that point? Who was I? Um, I was at home at seven, and then eight, nine, I was, you know, moved, moved away from home um, due to various reasons. Um, who was I? Confused. I was confused, very confused kid. Um, and uh, miss, missed, uh, missed my family. That's, that's, that's who I was. Um, I was looking for things and ways to channel that in the right way. And rugby became very quickly one of those. Um, but who, who was I? I, I don't know, I just used to run away a lot. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I used to do. Um, so I guess rugby for a career was, was perfect for me, wasn't it? We're just running away from people like Hask. So there you go. <laughs> um but no it was uh no yeah that's that's who i was at that point interesting do, do you mind me saying we, we can absolutely take that but do you mind me saying that that sort of 
part of your youth there was there was a bit of foster care and there was a yeah. journey of self discovery for you on on, on that course um and, and one of the things that we're talking about over the course of of these shows is sort of how rugby has has welcomed you has accepted you etc but also how how much more it could do and i just wonder almost as as a kid you mentioned that ru rugby was a really good outlet for you i mean is that is that very much the case? Was it a very good support structure at a young age to let you channel some of the things that you were trying to channel? Exactly that. I mean, you know, I was very fortunate in terms of the fact that I was in very good families. Um, I had a loving family as well and still do. Um, and, you know, you know, it, it's not always going to go right. Life's not always going to go right. I mean, there are people that haven't been in foster care that have a really good life. It's not about that. It's... But what rugby did allow me to do is channel m m my feelings, my emotions. It gave me an extra few families because everybody, again, is the, everybody looks after everyone. You know, I I couldn't even I couldn't even without some of the people I've met, I wouldn't have even been able to get to training. It's 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 that bad. Like I just wouldn't have. And you know, uh, these people that at the at the time I barely even knew would drive me frequently. You drive me, drop me back at home, and and all of that stuff. And when I think about it, you know, it gets me, it gets me quite emotional because it's like, like who was I to those people at that point? No, I wasn't anyone, and, and I was just this kid. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's actually, uh, I, it's the first time I've thought about it in this depth about. I'm lucky. I mean, I always knew I was lucky, but I mean, to think about how many things click on the way is is actually a bit ridiculous. Um, I, I'm just thankful to those people, um, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I can't really know what to say. It's it's just it is a bit mad. I what what I. I, I love your honesty and, and I love your, your emotion with it as well. And I, what I definitely don't want to do is sort of make this is something that, that you don't oh, want no. it to. But no, I no, think, no. funnily enough, by doing this and by speaking the way that you're speaking, you will be repaying the people who have helped you get to where you get to more than you could possibly imagine. I think there's, you know, there is satisfaction and fulfillment for those people in knowing how they've helped you to get to where you get to, which right now is as a proper champion of... <laughs> some quite extraordinary storylines. I mean, there are things that you have overcome on your journey. You've lived a life and you may not yet realise it, but, you know, there'll be a lot of people who tap into that as you go. Tell me a little bit. I mean, obviously, you, you've mentioned about how, you know, rugby was there for you, etc. But you've, you've put a lot into the game as well. And you've, you've got a huge amount of talent. When did you realise that you actually had quite a lot to offer in the game? Um. For me, I was, you know, I was always a year behind. Like there was county, didn't quite get into county that year. Then I got in county next year, but then there was a, another rung to that, that that year. So every year there was another thing that they added on. So there was county first year, didn't get in. Cause I started at 12 years old. So that was the first year of county. And it was like, oh, I really want it, but I can't get there. Then there was EPDG. And then I didn't get into that the first year, then got in the second year. And then, yeah, I, I was always chasing it. And I think that's what kept me hungry. Is I was always chasing that next thing. And I guess when I realised I was okay at rugby, you know, I was, I was you know, there was a year I scored like 43 tries in, in, my, in my year, in my, yeah, at my club rugby. Um, and, uh, yeah then but then I'd still I didn't even get in then um you know to the top level of that year and I, I just it, it was bub bubbling inside me I was just like I have to have to like make it here because I wanted to be a footballer when I was younger didn't everybody but then um I I uh I, I just realized that there was something in me that I needed to channel and and football wasn't doing it and didn't allow me to do it um and uh you know that that rugby did and I, I guess I guess that was the year really when I, I was like I'm gonna go for this when I scored 43 try 43 tries you know Croft Tom, Tom Croft was a good 
pre- a family friend of my family, one of my friends who was bringing me to rugby then, uh, the Beardsmores. Um, they're, <laughs> they're, yeah, they're, they've they've been they've they've been massive. Uh, the Tweddles, you know, they've been massive. Uh, it's, yeah, the Rolands, all these people, all these families. I could go on, but I could go on. But they all, I guess they all allowed me to realise that I could do it. They all allowed me to realise I could do it. And I, I guess I realised around 14. And I was like, I'm going for this. Um, and then, yeah, then at school, you know, Dents didn't help me loads. Um, we'd, you know, we'd be driving up and down to Tigers, uh, going going to training, just to training and you know, the, 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 a lot of our, the boys got contracted at 16, but we, uh, you know, a couple of lads at, at school weren't, weren't, weren't contracted. Um, and so we were driving up up and down from sixth form um, just, just to train. You know, we weren't in favour. But then I got that, you know, got into England. And that was something that that year I said at the start of the year, we had some South African gappies, absolute great blokes. Um, <laughs> but one of them played for Bishops. And he was like, Bru, ah, yeah, Bru. Uh, he's, I still remember him. I still remember him. Ah, oh, yeah, Bru, uh, you're going to play for England this year, eh, Bru? Yeah, I was like, bro, it's happening. Every day, every day we did something towards getting to the England under 18s. You know, it was, it was, and it was huge. And I sang that national anthem like I'd never sang it before because, and it's brilliant because I used to watch you, Hask. I used to watch you. Um, sat on the floor at the Beardsmore's house. And this full circle, it's just weird. This is weird. I think weird. that's... The more, the more I think about it, yeah, you go, sorry. No, I was going to say, but I, I think this is the beauty of what what we're trying to do here. And it, it, there's obviously some, some, some larger topics you want to talk about, but I think it's really nice because there will be, as Alex said, there's people in your position, or, but in, or, or also different ones, but still that, that striving to keep making it. Because some people, for, for some people, it feels like the roadmap's laid out and, and, and it's one thing after another and it just chips up away. For other people, it's disappointment after disappointment, after kind of fear, after everything else. And then they're ultimately able to, to make it. And I think that what, what ultimately everybody always says in life, it's the journey, not yeah. the result. But every now and then it's nice to get a, um, a milestone in the sand, like England or 18's view. Like it was the same for me. Like I, I, obviously we have very different... different um, uh, pass, but the same thing. I, I I'd never quite made it. Never quite made it. Never quite made it. Yeah. And for me, playing for England under 18s was a huge moment. And not, and not to make it into England under 16s was for a you know a white middle class privileged person. And that was my first real taste of disappointment. And that, that you know and and you know for some people, that, that, yeah, no, I don't, honestly, no, no, I, it, like it, it was my fruit, but it was kind of you know when you're when you're young and you don't really yeah. aware of a lot. You know, for some people have different obstacles you know we, we, we've talked to people in here who've had you know you've got uh, obstacles around your your sexuality that, that, that you've known for a long time and that's a real struggle for me it was my first kind of moment where I didn't get into something and I and I took it really badly and then you go for that milestone and it's interesting to hear you say the same thing you sing that anthem and that's that's all you need it's just one win and then it kicks on and then it shows you that you know what if you stick with it if you work hard if you're a good person and I promise you all the people you've talked about all the families a you know that they'll know how grateful you are because you're, you're that kind of guy but also be the fact that they've seen you do what you're going to do that's thanks enough for some people you know yeah 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 no you're exactly right you're exactly right and and and, and it's it's you know thinking about it and talking about this you know i'm itching to play again <laughs> i was just like oh brilliant what have you done um but uh no i mean we still we still be playing over this over the summer for seven, so it's could not gone away. You know, we played at the Roslyn Park um, London floodlit the other day, yeah. which was awesome, and that was good fun. So the fire is still burning, which is brilliant to hear. Um, and maybe we're giving you a little something back as well as what you're you're giving to us. We're restoking those fires, as you say. <laughs> Just on your journey though, in terms of obviously real potential with the rugby, and you you know you 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 made it to age group, and there's a lot more that's come. When did the music sort of blend into that? Was that always running alongside? Was it something you've tried and wanted? Where, where did that fit in? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I've, not, I've always been in like choirs and stuff since I was young. Um, my grandma was a big influence uh, 
Mavis Davis. <laughs> she's just, she's again. I always say it. She's the real rock star of the family. But um, about she was a big influence. So I was in choirs, you know, coming up, and then I went to. Um, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to a very good school, uh, Denston, and they had, you know, uh, we had the uh, choir there. Uh, we were performing arts. Music has always been there. Um, uh, but at 18, I decided I really wanted to do it, so I bought a load of stuff at uni, started started doing it in my room. But then at 21, I was uh, 20, 21, um, I was like, look, I, I'm going to do this properly and went to music school, um, you know, British and Irish Institute of Music in Bristol. Um, that's when I decided, no, I'm gonna, I really wanna do this professionally. And my original decision was to do it alongside my rugby career, but we'll, 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 uh, there are reasons that there's, you know, there's a few things that happened that unfortunately didn't allow that to happen. Um, and- uh, Can you go um, into those? In, in what way? Is that, is that music yeah, agents I mean, saying, I can't have you on top of the pops with your head smashed in or- <laughs> No, no, it's not that, it wasn't that. Yeah, I can go into them. I mean, it's, it was more, it was more uh, the fact that, you know, the X Factor came at a really bad time. <laughs> like I'd, the boys were away, you know, the boys were away at England. I'd been, you know, up until this point, three, two, three years, I've been training with Anthony Watson, with Rocco, with, you know, Matt Banahan, with, with these, these in massively influential wingers, which is why I, you know, was able to play but even if for the smallest amount of time at the level I was able to play because I learned so much off those guys. Um, and um, I, you know, I'd, th things came through, you know, Rocco was resting for a week and, you know, I'd broke into the first team and I, and I was playing some good rugby by my standards anyway. It was, you know, I was playing some good rugby and everyone every was happy, but then we'd already pre-agreed ages ago that, I was okay to when I was a ringer and no nowhere near the first team that it was okay to to um to go on the X Factor. And I was like, oh well it's not gonna it's not gonna you know, it's gonna be ah oh, two two months, what am I gonna miss? I'm not gonna be playing anyway. You know, that was my mindset. I was like, I can't miss out on this. This is huge. I'm not gonna play, I'll come back and then I'll train hard then. Um things happened and then I you know broke in, started playing really well. Broke in, broke into the first team and uh, made my premiership debut. And then the week after, I'm on live television. It's it's uh, it's a bit surreal. It's a bit mad. And sometimes I think about it and 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 I'm like, what happens if what happens if we didn't go on? Shut up. You know, I'd still be still be still be playing. I, would I still be playing at Bath? You know, uh, you know. But but I never. I never dwell on things like that because I think everything happens for a reason. Um, and I know that music's something I love and something I want, but I also realised that I had a dream one day to play for England, England, like like Ask, and I've not realised that. And I, I get emotionally attached to my to my dreams. So it's not like I just go, oh, yeah, oh, fine, I'll just go with this one. But then also I think about one day, it's so out there. I'm going to say it though. It's so out there. But think about one day, you know, selling out Glastonbury and imagine that uh, sunset. They're both, you know, they're both ridiculous things that could happen. But I've got to decide because that's the one thing you got to work on 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 it. I mean, this is this is this is almost so it's quite hard to keep up with your story levi it's like i, I don't know whether i'm going left right forwards backwards yeah. there's a lot happening in a very short space of time um which is amazing um i want to come back to the music in, in a moment or two but tell me a little bit i mean and i don't mean this in a flippant way at all but given where you've come from given where you're going given the options you've got in front of you it almost feels like you're you know the decision to 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 sort of come out, as it were, or, or declare your your bisexuality is sort of almost incidental. It's just part of the roller coaster that you're on. But I, that probably is doing it down in, in a great in a great service. That, what, that's what it would look like from the outside. Yeah. yeah. In is that is that very different to the reality? Was that quite a burden to carry, or was it? This is who I am. I'm, I'm, my life goes at 100 miles an hour, and I'm going to throw this out there. Yeah, you know, for me, I was, you know, I was. Um... It was, we were in lockdown, um, you know, I'd been, you know, doing, doing, you know, known kind of since I was 18, 
uh, and and learning more since I was eighteen. And then when I was, you know, when it when it happened, I was just like, you know what? I don't want to. I don't have to sneak around any anymore. I know the boys. You know, uh, this is the best time because I'm not going to go in next day and be paranoid about what people are saying on my back. Like I'm not. We're not in. So I'm just going to message it and see their response. And then the way things go, you know, you, you have a few drinks on the weekend. You you met at like a Muppet in front of the lads. You're the topic of news on Monday. And then on Tuesday, no one cares. That's the way it goes. And and, and I was like, yeah, no, I'm just going to message it. And then something else will come in. But by the time I get back in, actually, we never got back in because of Corona. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was that was my idea. Um. And then I messaged on the group but with the lads and they were like, oh, obviously they were amazing. They were, you know, congratulations. Well done for doing this. And then, but the the best thing was that they were still giving me crack about that. Giving me a bit of banter, giving me a bat. And that was the best thing they could have ever done. Because if they'd have been treading on eggshells around me, I'd have felt so bad. But the fact that, you know, they just went straight in and ripped into me was awesome. It was awesome. And it wasn't anything negative. They were, you know, well done, you know, feel, you know, we're here for you. But yeah, it was like, what, what do you want? A medal. And it was brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. And it's brilliant. So, you know, it's um that's that's exactly the response. I couldn't have asked for anything better, really. I mean, was there you said you knew since you're 18. I mean, was there a large amount of t- turmoil in terms of coming, you know, of kind of coming out and, and realizing it and, and were you really struggling with it? Or was it the fact that as you were learning more, it, it became a bit more of an issue that you felt like you needed to to, to talk about. Because for some people we talk about, it was an all-consuming thing and they were living two two separate lives. For you, it seems a little, well, I'm, I'm not putting words about it. Was it easy or was it particularly difficult? No, I tell you what, I, I, I tell you what it was. Um, I was still learning, as you said, like I was still learning as I was going along, um, you know, and, and still am, I'm still learning, but it's, it's um, what it was, was, you know, I was, again, driving, you know, off and trying to sneak in about and, and, and not wanting anyone to know. And that was the part that I, I felt like, why should I feel like I'm doing something wrong here? Um, that was that was the biggest part is that I didn't want to have to try and hide anything, you know, um, in terms of in terms of like I just wanted it to be out there. I didn't want to have to hide. That's it. That's yeah. Yeah. And did did that feel like a weight lifted, or did it just? I mean, yeah. I, it, it's no surprise that a rugby club and a rugby environment moves pretty quickly. Um, yeah. But did it feel like a weight off your shoulders having done it, or was it just great? It, it did. It. At first, I was like, you know, because it was like thirty seconds before there was a response. I was like, you know, waiting for my phone, it's like, whoa. But as soon as the responses started rolling in, because again, once one person messages, it's like, yeah. everyone's like, okay, that's the framework. Let me just make a variant of it. <laughs> um, but uh, no, 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 it was, um, it was brilliant. Uh, no, I, I felt, I felt, I did feel like a weight was lifted. I did. And I felt like I could continue to move on on, on my journey um and the boys not 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 care but they also supported me as a, as me uh you know they don't care about what you are or you know what sexuality you are they're going to support you as you as a rugby player i want to come on to postcards which we're asking all our guests to ask a few questions which we're going to put into sort of digital notes which we'll leave on our website for people who perhaps are looking for a bit of inspiration or some help or some guidance yep. etc um, but just, I suppose, to sort of sum up where we were, you know, the decision, obviously, to, to make and to drop that note into the WhatsApp group was, was fantastically received and rightly so. But is that your overall experience of rugby? And if you were, you know, if you were passing on your experience to those coming behind, would you would you give it a what mark would you give rugby out of 10 for the way that it's embraced you for who you are and where you're going? Yeah, it's hard to quantify it, I think, because I've just all I've ever felt is support from from the lads and from from the club and from the RPA and from you know the the, the people that are in place to support us did exactly that. And whether it whatever it be, um, they will support you. But 
you know, I genuinely would. I'd, I'd say nine because no one's no nothing's ever perfect, is it? But I, I had everything that I could have ever needed. Um, but they also didn't throw it down my throat. If you get what I mean, like they didn't go, oh, you you can have this, do this, do this, do this. Like um, it was, this is here if you need it. This is an option that you can take, and you, you can go ahead and take it. It's there. Um, but if you don't, you don't have to use it as well in terms of just services, you know, people to speak to, um, you know, advice, anything. Um, it was there, but if I didn't need it or want it, didn't have to use it, which was awesome. And I suppose the, the question that would follow on from that is how would you compare rugby to music? Tell you what, they're both performance sports, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, I think... I genuinely think they're pretty similar in terms of, again, in my, you know, my limited experience is, is um, it's it, rugby is about what you do um, on the, on the pitch, you know, you're performing, you, you need to be performing and on the stage is the same thing. You know, people come to hear you be at your best and perform. So it's, it's the same. I'd say that's the similarity. It's just, you know, they're both, you're both being, you're, you're an entertainer in both. But, but but what about the way that you have been received in both? I mean, would would you put? Oh. Yeah, because, because sort of the arts has probably got a, a much more um, diverse, diverse, yeah. yes, diverse populace, as it were, yeah. and it's been far more celebrated. You know, the topics and the journeys that we're discussing on this series in in arts long long before sort of sport, I think, has had the bravery to to break mm. the boundary. And I just mm. wonder whether you compare the two in that regard. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's tough because rugby, where rugby's come from, you know, traditionally, it it it, it, it uh, has been moving towards this um, for a while, I think. But I, I think obviously the arts has always been everybody's, hasn't it? And I don't mean that in any disrespect to rugby. It's just not been, it's just where it's come from. But, you know, it, it, it at the minute, is doing everything it can to, uh, in, in, for inclusivity, for equality, and, to, and for the sport to have everybody in it. And, you know, it still has a w way to go. And this isn't just in sexuality. It's in, in a lot of in a lot of things. Do you to... really feel that, Lever? Do you, re do you really feel that? Because I think I know sometimes when we talk about things, people feel just because we're talking about it, we're making a positive um, step. Do, yeah. you, do you actually believe that? And, and Because obviously you, you cross quite a few demographics yeah. in terms of what's, what's been talked about. You know, you kind of encompass quite a lot. And I wondered you know, whether you do think it's making as much progress as it should do, and if there's anything outstanding that you think needs improving? So, I, from what I could see when I was obviously in the game, that's what I can talk about, is um, I think that steps are being taken. Um, whether it's surface level, I don't know. Um, I think, you know, as I said, like I wouldn't have been able to get to where I was going if... If I didn't have the family and support around me, but that 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 rings true with a lot of people. It does. It's not whether I'm, you know, black, white, you know, straight, upside down. It doesn't even. It doesn't matter. You know, it's that that that's a lot of people. So uh, it's hard to talk about when I don't have the facts and I don't I, I don't know what they are doing. Um, I know they talk about it, as you say, whether it's rhetoric or surface level. I don't know. Um, but I think you can always improve in anything. And, you know, uh, it, again, I, th I think in comparison to music, yeah, rugby is going to be blown out of the water in all of those kind of um, categories because they've just been doing They haven't been doing it for as long. But it doesn't mean that, they're, you know, they're not trying and it doesn't mean that they're not pushing it forward. But, you know, there are, uh, I find it difficult to talk about these things because I still don't know where I stand. Um, and without all the information, I, I, would, I wouldn't be able to. But I think what, it can definitely you improve. By that? You, you don't know where you stand on, on what? I don't know where I stand on how, how, how much it's doing in terms of overall for, for, for um, these things like equality and, 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 and allowing people to um, be in the game. But I know that I see things... Uh, um, 
you know, I see like Hugo's running a really cool, cool thing with 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 that, and he's been directed. He's been put at the head of the board for that, isn't he? I can't remember what that was called. He's joined the RFU, absolutely. I think for diversity yeah. and inclusion. Yeah, That's exactly crazy. that. Exactly that, which is absolutely awesome. And like steps like that, I'm like, you know, they give you, you know, they 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 they're awesome. They're really really important. Um, how much power, influence, control he has on being able to make a difference and how much he's going to be listened to. I don't know. Is it, uh, is it a, uh, just something for them to say, Oh, look, this is what we've done. Uh, but he doesn't actually have any power influence. They're just going to listen to him and then just not doing anything. I don't know. But you know, Hugo is awesome. He's a really clever man. And um, I'm sure, that, and there are loads of clever people in rugby. So I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure that, it'll move in the right direction. Um, and I'm sure that we'll, rugby will continue to do that. Um, so, yeah. But when I say I don't know what I mean, so, sorry, when I say I need all the information because I don't know, I mean, in terms of like, I've not, you know, over the last six months, I've not been massively tuned into what's been, what's been happening. Obviously, I've seen the BLM stuff. I've seen the equality and pride stuff. Um but I don't know what's going on behind the scenes is what is what I'm saying. It's very interesting. Um, we mentioned earlier on, and I'm, I'm conscious of your time, that we would love, if you're happy to, for you to leave three digital postcards for people who might come to the website and want to know more about you or might want to know more about your journey and might just want a bit of help as they make their own decisions and, and their own path. So the three questions that you've chosen, we'll go one by one. And if you're happy to answer them, the first one we'd love you to answer is, my greatest supporter was... Dot, dot, dot. My greatest supporter, um, I guess it was myself. <laughs> um, I always knew that I wanted to work hard for, what, for, for where I wanted to go to be. Um, but also my greatest supporter was pyramid and that triangle that was behind me that I've discussed before you have to be your your first and best supporter but also realize that the circle you have behind you is equivalent to that and so my greatest support was myself but my families and my friends that I had at that time also that is a very good answer that is a very good answer has you got the next one? I uh, this from. I, I let, what me? You want me to answer that, or you want well, me no, to answer that? No, I just I think you, you should throw it to Levi. The, the next one is I learnt most from. I learnt most from Levi. I learnt most from. Oh. I learnt, I learnt most from realizing that you're not going to please everybody, um, no matter how hard you try. Um, you're never going to please everyone. And so I guess the best thing you can do is be the best version of yourself in every situation and understand that it's okay to learn and it's okay to improve. Um, and it's okay to, to, to get things wrong. That's it. That's a great answer. I got, should we do the last one, Alex? Yeah. The one thing I'd love to see is one thing I'd love to see. I'd love to see uh, a world and and a, and uh, where coming out or you know BLM or Pride or all of that isn't necessary. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. <laughs> um, do you it's, think that that is realistic in your lifetime? Do you think that's achievable? Do you think personally? I don't, personally, I, I don't. There's a lot. There's a lot of hate. There's a lot of issues because it's not just those issues. You know, there are. You know, there are there are a lot of issues out there, excluding what we've already spoken 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 about. I think all we can do in our lifetime is chip away at it. And there's a really well-known term in academia, standing on the shoulders of giants. And that's exactly what we're doing, whether it be music, whether it be rugby, 
you know, the first person to pass a ball definitely didn't pass it like, you know, you see Marcus Smith or those boys pass it. You know, it, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. We're improving. We're not, we're not reforming our foundations. We're always pushing, we're always being innovative. And I think that we take that example and we bring it into, into relations with, with other things. And I think if we accept that this is how much we can do, but we can do this to the best of our ability, then our kids will be better. They're being taught so much. I talk to my little brothers and sisters, uh, you know, uh, and I hear some of the things that they say and, you know, it's, it's encouraging. It's encouraging because no one's taught hatred. No one's taught anything uh, like that. Sorry, no one's born with hatred. No one's mm. born with that. They're taught it. And, um, Education's the key. I, I don't know if it's appropriate to tell this story, but I'm going to anyway because you're talking about the, like I think the, the, I, I think particularly with the matters you're talking about here, children are are almost educating us. And I, I said I've got an 11 year old and a nine year old, and my kids are they, they don't even bat an eyelid. It's like it's just not a thing. And yeah. I say that because the first sort of the first I ever learned about homosexuality was through friends of, I think a friend or contact of my parents when yeah. I was eight and he must have been 70. And I remember my parents telling me that he'd been to jail because he was homosexual. And for me as an eight year old kid, that was frightening. And it was, you know, I was, I was very, you know, not I was confused by it. it, was, it, was a, it that, that sort of painted it into something that was, you know, yeah. That, that nowadays you just are like I can't quite believe that that yeah. was the way these things were were kind of perceived. You know, it wasn't that long ago that it was you know a criminal offence to be homosexual. Mm. And and I say that because you know as an eight year old kid I've you know, I, I would say been lucky enough to be on that journey of society becoming far more tolerant and understanding. Um, and I've been on that, but my kids are. Are only really getting involved at a point where society is wholly and well I say wholly society is far more comfortable and accepting and it's a norm now in a way that 40 50 60 years ago it was it was anything but and I, I think sometimes it's important Levi that we do recognize how far we've come Absolutely. whilst also saying how far we've got to go exactly that that's that's literally what I was gonna say is I was gonna say uh, you know 30 years ago 20 20 nah 30 years ago you know I, I wouldn't have been 30 35 years ago I wouldn't have been able to be having this conversation with you if I had we been in in, yeah. in America I know it's an extreme example but it really isn't that long ago um and I know it's a different country but it really isn't that long ago. um and I hear stories from my family you know of of uh, and friends of, of things that have happened and I've been very lucky and guarded from this actually being in the environments that I've been in um, but you know race relations they are the best they've ever been but also then they've been divided by recent events and I don't like to speak about it because I don't pretend want to pretend like I'm educated that much about it because I, I still don't know where I stand in terms of what to do, how do I champion it? I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. And so that I always come back to that thing about being the best you can be. Yeah. And by doing that, you then champion others. But it's, it's, it's a complex, a wholly complex subject to talk on. And and people are scared that if they say something or voice their opinion, that someone's gonna, someone or or people are going to attack them. For it. But that's yeah. but that's not the point. The point is you voice your opinion, and if it's wrong, you be open to being educated. If I voice my opinion and I am wrong, don't attack me for it. Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Give me logical things and steps, and I'll listen and I'll read and I'll I'll I'll, I'll look into it. And then from there, we all grow, don't we? We don't grow by arguing. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll say, you know, because we, we've, we've talked about this before on our show, we talked about this in person. I think there's two, two points I, I want to touch on. I think 
You have come a long way. And I don't think you can judge the past by today's standards. And what, what we know to be wrong now was perceived as normal. And we can see it, but you can't go back and change it because that's history. All we can do is actually learn and move on. You can't eradicate the past. It doesn't matter how many statues you pull down. It doesn't matter how much you go and do. What happens today is far more important than trying to uh, retrospectively judge people. Um, and, okay. and, I th and, I, and I think for, for me as well with this, you know, kind of the, the, these situations is you know, we, we can always try to do better and to learn. And actually, uh, we talk a lot about being scared about saying things. And actually, what, what we've got ourselves into is such a muddle is that a disagreement is the spice of life. Uh, uh, having different opinions is what's important. And, and Ricky Gervais said it very well, that, you know, how, how arrogant are you to think that you can say something people aren't going to disagree throughout exactly. there? Like, how, how dare you think that you're not going to do that? But what we have to remember and what we have to continuously remember and what brands and companies and everybody and people in the media have to remember is that if you say something and I don't like it and I feel angry, uh, that is an emotion. You have, you have made emotion. It is not what you've said isn't angry. It is <laughs> making me feel angry. If I feel shamed by what you said, shame is an emotion that only I can feel. And I think what we've got ourselves to confuse is allowing us to feel different emotions through disagreement. And I think it, I think that's a very it's a very hard thing for us to realise. But actually, you know, it's okay to disagree. It's okay just to move on. It's okay for you to get you know. But we can't then progress to this this aggressive cancelling, this mob mentality because all these people who are, are feeling emotions. They're not words. Don't make they make you feel. They don't they don't actually cause what you're saying. So yeah. I think that's something to always something to really remember. And I think what you're saying is is perfectly true. But everyone we've spoken to says the same thing. I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't want to say something. And look, we do oh, that. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of that. No, no. no but I, I, I am. Like Alex, we Alex and I talked about it yesterday. I'm not scared to. I'm never scared to anything. But there are around sort of sexuality, gender, um, all these difficult topics. There are so many nuanced words, and there is so much context. Your yeah. struggle is different from my struggle. Is different from Alex's struggle. Um, you know. Everybody's life experience is different and we always try to merge it and make it. And I think we have to be understanding. We have to be a little bit calmer. We have to, you know, agree to disagree. We have to be comfortable not being, you know, have to be comfortable not being comfortable. Yeah. But also, yeah. you know, if you say the wrong thing, it might be the wrong thing for you, but it wasn't the wrong thing for me. And then we, we can look at it and could we learn? Could we not learn? And that's how we move forward, you know? No, agreed. Agreed. Exactly that. And that's, that's that. I think that's it. Ask is like, people need to understand that like a heated debate or discussion or argument or whatever you want to call it is literal lit, is literal growth like that is growth like you go to the gym yeah it hurts after you get bigger you get stronger you know you, you play rugby you drop a few balls you get told off you know? oh brilliant don't want to do that again i might go work on my skills great someone's arguing with you someone's annoying you and they their opinion you believe is wrong don't argue with them you know try and educate them help them grow help them improve but your opinion might be wrong as well so that's also a line where hmm how do you where, where is the truth in this um educate yourself go read a book go read yeah. a book don't read twitter read a book yeah yeah amen amen What's really nice about this, Levi, is that your your journey is is so it's just so inspiring at every turn, and you wear the challenges that you've overcome incredibly lightly. Um, we're trying to sort of distill the conversations we're having it down into two points, and you've you've nailed it. Listen and learn, and be the best you can be, and those are two really powerful takeaways, I think, for the people who will sit and listen to this. There are two things we desperately need to clear up before we say thank yeah. you. Um, ben and Tom, any good at actually singing or just clothes horses either side of you? <laughs> or not even clothes what. horses, because none of you none, none of you actually wore any clothes. Clothes, no, I tell Window you what. dressing. Yeah, Ben and Tom are awesome. Ben and Tom are, are great, great blokes. And and to be fair, it was my first ever show. So they looked after me, you know, I was twenty one and in, in LA it was a bit surreal and mental. Um it was absolutely amazing great blokes and um yeah no they 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 don't they know what they're doing don't they they're the old the old horses aren't they so there you, you go you haven't actually answered the question Fode's in particular <laughs> he, he genuinely thinks he can sing he genuinely fancies himself does he not 
Uh, you Vogels. know, Bose can sing. Yeah, I'll give it to him. And so it wasn't Tom was in a band years ago. It was twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. It was cool. Tom was in a band. Tom was in a band. I think. I think mean, Vogue loves his, uh, you know, his West life and like ah, uh, Backstreet Boys and stuff like that. He's proper old school. Tommy, Tommy loves his. Yeah, no, he. That's not again, old school, Levi. We, we are a child of the nineties. It's not old school. <laughs> We were getting on quite well until he started, you know, started <laughs> pigeonholing it. Those of us who like the Backstreet Boys as old uh, school. No, I'm, I'm, I'm a child of nineties, nineteen ninety eight, but I'm a child of nineties. <laughs> um, <laughs> that doesn't count, Levi. You no, didn't know what you were doing. You're a child of the nineties when you're living in the nineties. Not yeah, that you're yeah. born in the nineties. You're, uh, you're a child of the two thousands, pal. Yeah. That's your oh, thing. That that hurts to hear. That does hurt to hear. Yeah. You're Britney. Were you Britney Spears early two thousands? Yeah. Britney Spears, Nicole. Yeah. Oh my God! There yeah. you go. So, oh, yeah. oh, works in amazing God. ways. Um, and final question: What is what is next for you? What's on? What's 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 coming down the tracks? You know, it's it's. I've actually hit another intersection in my life. It's always going to be music. Music's going to be a, a, a truth. I think for the rest of my life. Um, but you know, I'm, there's a few things that I've I've wanted to do that. I now have the time to do and explore. Um, you know, even when I was young, I was younger. I wanted, to, you know, the armed forces, uh, Royal Marines, reserves potentially, um, and uh, uh, maybe play rugby for the navy. I'm going to continue to play rugby sevens. We'll see what happens. I, j- I made a joke with Rocco the other day, saying, uh, "Our rocks, I'm going to have to start calling you Corporal," which he, I think he enjoyed. Um, <laughs> So uh, yeah, no, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'm, I've not made any hard decisions at the minute, but um, there's a lot going on in, in my head, and, and uh, I think it's going to be exciting. So we'll see. I love it. I, I, I think once you've done that, you could be a spaceman, and then you can go to politics, <laughs> yeah. and then there yeah. are, I mean. Jesus yeah, Christ, the sectors that you're ticking off. You won't know this. You won't know this because you you have to Google him. You're like Mr. Ben. Mr. Ben was a was a, it was a cartoon. I think when Alex was younger, where basically this this guy we wanted to go to a fancy dress party once, and he went to a shop. And he went into the shop, and basically when he went into the dressing room and put on the costume, he walked out, and he was that costume. And was, he used it. to go. He used to go there every day. It's called Mr. Ben. My friend called me Mr. Ben because every morning I'm on GMB promoting something else or talking about something <laughs> else. Um, and but you're like Mr. Ben. It's like you go into your bedroom and you're like, oh. I think I'll be a soldier today, and you'll come out and live that. And you're like, oh, I think I'll be a pop star. Oh, I think I'll be a farmer. Like I can, I can imagine it. Like in your mind, this is what's going to happen in the next twenty years. Well, well, actually, when I was growing up, like my, my foster dad said to me, like, uh, oh, you, you're a jack of all, but a king of none. So, one, that's actually going to be the the name of my first album, and two, that's I think I've just taken it to the extreme, and I'm enjoying it being a jack of all. So there we go. Quite right too. You are a Swiss Army pen-up. Your CV must be about 40, 45 pages long, I would have thought. But... <laughs> I actually don't put half of my stuff on my CV. My mum was like, why don't you do it? I was just like, no one wants to read this. So... They, do. they do. You are hugely inspiring. I've really, really enjoyed this. I don't know how you'll feel the same as well. Yeah, um, as well. Levi, thank you so much. Some brilliant, brilliant pearls for us to take away. And we will watch and listen with great interest. And very best of luck with everything that comes next. Thanks so much. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Ask. Cheers, mate.